Good morning. Welcome to my podcast. Um, here I'm Michelle Ruth. We're from Prince Strand. And this is my space where I talk about mostly about knitting and a little bit of biking now and again. Um, yeah, I cut this this morning. And when I came out of the bathroom, we had load shedding. So, sorry. This is how I look like. <laughs> Uh, with enough coffee or tea, I hope you have some and that you will enjoy the morning with me. No, don't worry, it won't be that long. It won't be that long. So if I look this way, I've got my computer this way with my patterns on. But I did think of doing for next time is to print the first page and actually show you the pages here as we talk through them. Um, now that I've got my printer set up. I've got also quite a bit of admin things that I would just like to speak about, but we can do that as we go along. Yeah, so now I got you all curious about the admin things. I hope I hope it's not going to be boring. Um, so let me let me answer some questions quickly. Um, what I've got on is the pattern, it's a pattern collection called Women. It is the J sweater. I'll stand up a little bit that you can see the pattern. I've done it in the main color is called Fog. It is from Hello Gold. So it's acrylic. And the color work is done with I can't remember. I'll show you the pictures. Um Spinlets. I found them in the waterfront here in Cape Town. It is an unspun yarn or a low spun yarn. I really don't know where it is. I hope so. It's really very nice. Um, it was my yeah, my first colour work with real yarn. <laughs> with natural yarn, sorry. Um, no offense to to those who cannot afford natural yarn, yeah, I do understand it is quite a bit expensive to do an entire garment. So this is, my fringe is going to bother me the whole time. So I'll try not to look at that. I'll try to look at the color. Um, so this is a, a nice uh, example of how you can knit um, a garment with natural yarn is to pair it with normal acrylic and it's thick and it's warm and it looks beautiful and I do like the color work for not to be um, flashy um, this is just my personal taste and then the second garment that you see here at the back I finished this is the Emilia's cardigan from Hobby um, this is also an acrylic and I found these beautiful wooden buttons. They're huge. You can see it from my finger. They're huge. Um, and I just like the way that it came out. If I might need to change something, I think of closing this buttonhole because it's quite high up. And if you wear it and you're tired, it pulls the, the fabric and it doesn't look nice. It's not going to last long. Um, so I will, I will close that and remove the first button and then it will just have three, three buttons. Open this one too. It makes me think about the movie The Borrower. I hope I pronounce it up properly. It's about these small little people that, that lives under the wooden floor of um, a house. Um, but they're like miniatures. It's, it's it's a nice movie to go and watch. Maybe not for small kids. I don't know. Go and judge yourself. I haven't watched it for a while, so but this just just made me think about it. Jersey, yeah. In South Africa, we we call uh, we name a cardigan and a sweater a jersey because it's knitted. <laughs> I'll leave that for you. And at the back. You can see the cuts. I think the colors are very nice. Okay. So those are 
the two objects that you can see I've got a bunch of stuff here next to me on the couch that I will speak about um, <clears throat> but I wanted to say first of all I want to say thank you so so much for a very kind lady who I want to say gifted me some music for my um, for my channel she is the gayful knitter um, she is from Denmark and I have met her virtually not one-to-one -one, just watching her videos um, with um, Fia from or Pia from 50 Fabulous Knits um, when she did her marathons where they knit throughout 24 hours but throughout the night um, and the first time that's where I saw her the first time two years ago um, and then this time around I thought wouldn't it be nice to have some music that she plays on the piano because in those marathons she does a concert for us playing piano so what she do she is a, a music teacher for small kids I think she said from three to eight years old or something like that and um, she's not teaching them how to play the instrument but she's teaching them about music and to enjoy and to love music and that is so beautiful to me because in today's world we need that hey and um, I all that she wanted in in return was a baton um, and I'm just really really grateful for this beautiful music please go and check her out playful knitter um, playful being playing piano um, she loves socks you guys must go and look at her socks I my socks doesn't get close to hers so so I just want to say thank you um, then yeah you probably also saw that I've changed a little bit to the um, naming of my podcast I've took, took the episodes out because I'm I want the word fooling came to my mind <laughs> now that's why I stopped I've been fooling around with when I do my podcast sometimes it is um, every week sometimes it's once a month sometimes so it's not it's very irregular and I just feel to call it an episode is not an episode is a thing that is standardized so yeah mine is not like that but to in order so I've also done a schedule to that I can try that I would like to try out to see whether um, I can do it more regularly so my for June and I would love you to participate please comment and please let me know what is your thinking about this and do you think it's going to add structure do you think it's going to be too much um, okay keep bearing in mind that I work five days a week full-time in IT so we do work once a month a weekend as well but it's usually from a Saturday night late afternoon till Sunday morning early hours or Sunday mornings just for testing um, and it's not my turn every month either so it's okay so I was thinking of doing so we've got four four weeks in a month so the first one I would like to do say what is my plans for the month which of these gazillion things I'm going to focus on because I think I want to get stuff finished and we just talk a little bit all the cows or or whatever the case might be sorry a bad bit stand and the last one I want to call a wrap up and to show you everything that I've done for that month because I'm sure stuff would have crept in that I haven't got on my planning list and I'm not a person bearing in mind this is my hobby and not my job and my my work is very structured I want to have a little bit of freedom um, in allowing how did um, what's the name I'll get to that I'll get to her name just two seconds I've got her here on my screen I'm sure this no it's not her okay I'll, I'll get the name for you 
I'll find it quickly. Um, she said she doesn't want to, um, she wants to get back into the, it's, it's Amy Palco from The Meaningful Stitch. She spoke about, um, do you focus your podcast on the end products? Then you are becoming a, a, a product knitter. In other words, you, uh, there's no time to enjoy the process. You are knitting to show and tell your end products and the patterns and as if it's just knitting. And I'm, I've got enough pressure from work to, to deliver and I don't want to, my hobby to be like that as well. So that's why I thought, okay, I'm just going to do and say, I think I'm going to do this. And at the end of month, I'll tell you, look, I did do this or this month. It didn't work out because I've got all these new craft starts that I want to show you and talk to you about what I did that list. <laughs> okay, so, and then the middle two. The second weekend in every month, we have our Knit Happens um, in-person visiting group. Um, at, on the 10th, we are meeting at the Route 44. So if you're in the Cape Town area, you're welcome to join us. We will have some lucky draws and everything. And um, it's going to be fun. I hope it's going to be fun. And I hope everyone's going to enjoy it. So the second um, weekend in a month, I would like to maybe bring back something that happened during that visit or something that I've learned during that visit or something that um, tickled me to cast on or maybe where we were and how I found it. I don't know, something like that. And then the third weekend, I would like to do a, a live on YouTube. So with the live, um, I'm going to open it up. You can ask questions. I'll answer as much as I feel comfortable to. And you, yeah, and um, I'll show you some knits that I'm busy with as at that day or that week. Um, yeah. So I don't know how long those will be. Maybe a half an hour or something like that. Okay. Then I'm also trying. To, so that's the four weeks. Then on the second one when we have our face-to-face um, -face, um, in-person group, I would, I've been thinking of, and I'm hesitating because <clears throat> I'm trying to find a platform where I can do a, um, a interview, a virtual interview, where you as viewer can see both of us, um, and now the, the first thing that comes to mind is yes, Zoom, but with Zoom you cannot record this, the, it as a video if you don't pay them. So I don't want to sign up for a contract and then not being able to proceed and always do that. So I'm looking at, um, I want to test out um, Microsoft Teams because we use it at the work and we can record messages from there but I don't know what type of contract the work has with Microsoft to enable that so I just wanted to say I download Microsoft Teams on my phone I've got an Android not <laughs> Apple and um, just want to see whether we can have a, a meeting with one of my kids and whether I'm being able to record it and then I know what I can use so I will give you updates on that as well and to what platforms we can use and because I would like to chat to people to tell me what they're doing, um, are they dying yarn, are they, what shops do they have, what is their special, why did they start doing what they're doing, are they weaving, can they maybe show us how they're weaving, just little bits and pieces. Do they want to show us about spinning? Do they want to show us their sheep on their farm? Do they want to talk about the different fibers and the fiber lengths and the qualities? So, and some, so it's like half educational and half just, you can meet someone that you maybe not have thought is doing the yarn story. That's, that's my idea and I'm going to try and do that in June. Um, okay, 
So let's see what's else on this side. <laughs> so I have, I want to tell you about this one first. So this, oops, oops, let me just bring the back closer. This is the, put the needles like that. Because I want to show you the back. Sorry, that's the needles of the touching the stand. I'm just going to use this my little bookie's back end to put behind it that you can see. This is the Be Beautiful from here. Let me just get a name for you. Uh, where did she disappear to now? From 50 Fabulous Knits. There she is. <coughs> Sorry. Um, this is the back. I'm going to make a summer top. So this is the arms. I made it bigger and I increased... Okay, so what did I do? It's a v-neck. It's a v-neck. And I'm still busy with the body. So last time that you saw me, I was like busy with the, the two front panels. Um, so I've put them together now and I'm busy going into the round. Um, so what did I do differently in her pattern? She, it's beautiful written. It's very easy to follow. It's really, really worthwhile to, to buy. Um, she starts with a one front and then you do the second front and then you pick up the stitches because you do a, um, a provisional cast on and then you pick up the stitches for the back add stitches for the neck at the back and add the second one and then you knit the back that's how a pattern reads I did I did the back because I wasn't sure how I'm going to do the v-neck because my stitch count for the gauge was okay but my row count for the gauge was out totally out so i did, wanted the back to be like the base for that i can use to to measure when when can i put them together and not to be have a smaller top than the back front than the back okay so that's the one change that i made um the other change that i might do and it's really just because um, I do like my, especially summer tops, to be flowy. I do, I'm not a person for tight fitting clothes. Um, and I cannot say it's an age thing because I think, um, what is the first name? I think she's my age or older than me. This is really bad. And there's really a one long one store there. I'll go and get it just now. Um, I did add, like you would have done with a round, with a yoke sweater, you would have added the stitches under the arm. So I've done that just to have a little bit more space and yeah, to have flowy. But so in order to, let me keep my arm like that. So when I got about, yeah, just put them together there. I saw, mm -mm, I've only got one ball of yarn left in this lovely green with the speckles. Okay, let me talk to you about that. There's my slippies. So this is Kara base from Esteries and Yarn Creations. Let me just fold it that you can see. There we go. And this is a four ply sock weight with uh, 400 meters per 100 grams super wash 100% super wash and it's so nice I just love I can hide my face then focus um, I love the peach in between I did mention it before when I saw it and I just smiled I just have had to have it even though it's just two, I knew I won't have enough. So when I come to that point and realization, 
I was sitting in the knitting group the week before the knitting group met and I was like, what am I going to do with this? Do I add peach to it or, or will I ever get this green, this minty green? And I looked and I looked everywhere, nearly, and I was looking for that will get to me quickly. So I thought, and I found one. Let me put them together. It's a little bit more blue, but it's the same. You see the color? It is there. So, and who was my save? Who saved me? Guess, guess, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. Guess, guess, egg fox yarn. <laughs> She saved me. She had two left and I took both of them in order to make sure that I've got enough. And this is a uh, superwash, 75% merino, 25% nylon, so it's soft face, three ply, and it's 366 meters per 100 grams. So it's a little bit thicker than this one. But you know what? I'm just Look out that I'm concealed. Oh, no. I don't think that's that a big difference. So my idea is to go with this as low as possible. That pattern, the Be Beautiful pattern has a lovely ribbing. It's not normal ribbing, it's a pattern that she does rib pattern that she does at the bottom and I think that will really look beautiful if it's only in one color so I will fade this color out as I get to the bottom and use this for the ribbing or a portion of the bottom and the ribbing and then also for the sleeves and I'll save a little bit of this just to put as an edge on the sleeves and a pattern on the sleeves does not have this ribbing that she has at the, at the bottom of the hem that I'm really thinking of adding that to the sleeves. So, just just to round it off, she's got, um, honestly, I didn't even look. I think she has a, um, just a normal ribbing at the, but go and look at the pattern. It's really, really beautiful. It's really worth it. Um, and it's so easy written and it's i think these little butterflies ugh, bees at the back is just like adding some detail to it make it look expensive and nice okay oh and i've got a little bee stitch marker wait let me put that there come on I didn't want to let go. So I'll add that there and show you the little stitch marker. I've got a little B stitch marker. Can you see that? I think it's over there. You go. This is from Harte Miko. It's so cute. It's so cute. And it belongs with this. The summer tea. She, um, so this Be Beautiful also comes in long sleeves in the same pattern. So you can make a winter or a summer garment with it. Um, and I think to have a, to use um, fingering weight for South African winters is nice if you are indoors or you sit in an office because you want to dress winter but you can't and but you want rather want to layer on than to have a thick garment like this one i will never be able to use to wear this one to the office i'll melt as if it's <laughs> midsummer because it's so thick and so warm but here in the house and if we go outside it's very nice okay so that's my be beautiful Then, I don't know whether I made any progress on anything else. 
Um, so this, let me just get the pattern name quickly. Don't have it open. Oh yeah, is the Costal Cardisol saddle? I'm sorry if I bush bushed the names of the patterns. Um, I will put it down in the descriptions below for you. Um, I'm trying to find who was the designer. It's usually at the top of the bottom. Bottom. This is Maddie Moo. Maddie Moo's uh, saddle, saddle shoulder pattern. Um, I just love it. That's the back. This is the front. It should have been a broken rib. I didn't make a broken rib. I just carried on with ribbing. I might fade the ribbing out as I come down. I've already slipped, um, split for the sleeves. I think I was here last time I spoke to you about it. So I did progress a little bit with it. Um, I'll show you just now what I did with my time. So this yarn, it's, it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. So this yarn is from Estrees and Yarn Creations. Let me just fold it so you can see nicely. What's it? The Venus. And it is a two-ply fingering weight. And it's got 350 meters per 100 grams. And I'm busy with my... Just to give you an idea, okay, I am knitting with two balls, so alternate knitting, there's a name for it. You knit, you knit one round till there's about five stitches left um, before your, your first yarn starts and then you stop. You skip those five stitches and you carry on with your second one. So your your point where you take on the new yarn moves all the time. So what I am doing or paying attention to is that I start with that process under the right arm so that that movement of the yarn happens at the back, not in front. Because um, I'm starting to do that as from when I go into the round and I don't want that to go over my, my chest area if something should happen. And I'll move my little stitch marker with an M on and a sweetie or a spinning wheel and bells. <laughs> I just love these bells um, because it's it's like you know, the beautiful thing about um, hand-dyed yarn is the excitement to knit with it with the, work, the playing of the colors because not every ball is exactly the same and, um, and so you've got the visual um, enjoyment thereof and now if you add little bells to your work or some people like the tick, 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 tick of the knitting needles um, I use bamboo needles so the tick tick is not that loud. So I, I need the, the audio stimulation as well when I'm knitting. And the bells is doing that for me. Please don't look at my hair. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, so let me show you the yarn like that. It's got all sorts of colors in, but it's gray. And browns those are my favorite ones and I think the way that it knitted into the pattern is beautiful it's stripy but it's not stripes do you hear what I'm saying I hope so okay. then at the at the certain knit group I can't sit and knit a garment because I need to focus and there's way too many distractions. 
um, I need to um, do something small and you also want to take something with you that you can just put down anytime and and take the coffee from the waiter or or go and chat to someone because something reminds you about something or if they come to you that you can just put down and pay attention to them um, and not keep on knitting that's just me other people do knit or they talk to other people um i'm okay with that if you're in the group and just like have a general chit chat but if someone wants to speak to you about something then then i like to make eye contact and talk about it. so i've been knitting this um so the yarn that i use is a grape oh dear <laughs> it's me again that can't see me okay so this is african expressions it is the uh kit maui and mulberry and merino and polamide blend which is the sock base and i know i can do two socks at a time with on the same needles like i used for the Beautiful tea, I did the two front panels in that method. But when you want to chat to people, little thinking as possible. And this is my sock so far. And this is the little hand stitch marker. Also by um, let me put it this way around. There. Also by Harta Miko cute and my contrasting yarn i'm using is from the leftovers from my daughter's cardigan uh no it's a sweater um also from naughty habits um, i don't think i've got that label anymore no i don't sorry but this base also got silk in it i don't know whether you can see the flag it's so beautiful. It's got a little bit of blue in there, like there. And it's and I think it, it played very nicely with this purple. I've got a, a idea for the leg. Um, but I'll show you when I get there. It's no pattern. It, I do it from top from toes up. I cast on um, what's it twelve stitches on the Turkish Turkish um, castle method where you just roll the yarns and then I increase every second one and one day I did the knit knit one front one knit one back way of increasing and it just didn't look nice. So I I told myself not to do it again. So I used the that one left, that one right method, and I think I think the increase looks okay. I think it looks okay. It's not wholly totally closed. Where the one back, one front, it it makes a little a hikey, <laughs> a little old. Okay, so this is my the thing that I do when I um, go and sit and knit with the people, with the ladies. And I want to invite you to join our group. Um, it's open for everyone. We, even though we are ladies at the mo only ladies at the moment, we open up for chains that wants to join us. We're not going to think it's funny, and also for other um, culture groups to join us. Uh, we meet once a month on a Saturday morning. We have a WhatsApp group where we say where we're going to meet and. Maybe this is something special that someone wants to share or there's free patterns or there's a new designer that one, we want to talk about. So it's, it's lots of, and then the visit is just coffee and cake or coffee and breakfast or brunch or whatever you feel like. So the, the ease are for your own pocket. We try to find venues that we don't have to have 
an interest fee entry fee on so that you can just come and just drink a cup of coffee if you are on a restricted budget so it's all about the visit it's all about making contacts networking and just to see what other people are doing and maybe they're doing techniques and show you how to do those techniques that's nice and new for you come and join us um okay so i did speak about the the monthly structure that i want to change oh we've got a birthday i nearly forgot so you know i don't mention the names of the people so these people are registered to my newsletter and on the newsletter form i ask what's your date of birth not the year just the day and the month and what i wanted to do and what i really still want to do but i'll start next year in 2024 i will start next year to say for everyone that's on my newsletter I will send out a card to your postal address so you need to give me your postal address on the form registration form and then i'll send you a happy birthday card in advance so you can have it before your birth it's your birthday well hopefully um so i just thought that that's something nice because everything is on the computers these days we don't we don't buy books anymore we don't smell paper anymore we um yeah, look, I do all my, my patterns are still on my computer. So I want to print them and show you. And I want I want the thought of sending a card and you open up your post box to go and find something. And there's a little card. I think it might be such a nice idea. So until next year, I'm going to wish you a happy birthday here. So um, the initials is AM, A is the name, M is the surname, on the 30th of May is your birthday, happy birthday, uh, may it be a beautiful day, I think the 30th is Tuesday, right, um, I hope you have the day off from work and can relax and enjoy the f f family and friends and have a beautiful year ahead. I I do know this lady. She um, works for the same company that I am, or used to. I don't know whether she's still there. Anyway, it will be nice to hear from you. Um, okay, so I think that's everything on my list. So I want to show you who who um, stole my time this month. Um, but before I do that, I just want to say that. At the end of this video, my mom and I went to, we took a drive from, from our home, Gordon's Bay, around the coast towards Royals. That's a small um, village. We didn't go there all the way, but on the way there we stopped. It's half up the mountain, so you look down onto the sea. And I took a small little video that I will put in at the at the end of this and show you. Um, it was a nice day, just like today. No clouds. The wind was howling. You will see the grass like. And um, I'm also adding. Um, I'm putting um, playful notice music over that, that you don't get the disturbance and the noise of the camera. Uh, or the, my phone's mic picking up the wind. Um, cool. So let me know how, whether you enjoyed that and whether you would like to see more of those nature things in within our area. Okay, so <clears throat> last one. Who stole my time? Do you recognize this? Yeah, it's a ranunculus. So this is my third ranunculus that I'm knitting. Um, this one is in a double knit. Um, it stole my time because I first did it with a 4.5 millimeter needle and it came out like 
this. It's very nice and neat. I love it. But I quickly learned that I don't have enough yarn. And to buy enough that I can do a long sleeve sweater like this one, it's going to cost me quite a bit. So I started over with a 5.5, a 5 millimeter, and it, it didn't work. I saw I'm not going to be able to do sleeves at all. And I want sleeves, so my eyes are burning. And then I started again with a 6 millimeter needle, and I did this one. And um, I also did the alternating yarn, but today I'm not at the end yet. That's where the sleeve needs to come in, that's for the underarm. So I've done quite a bit. So I've got left this piece that is one, this is one skin, you see the end, this is one skin. And then I've got one more that's not even one, one lit up. I'll show you just now. And then I had to order, I ordered two more. So I'm waiting for that to come. Because then I will alternate what I've got with the new ones. And I'll do the sleeves. Uh, I'll do the bottom first. Because I need my, my stuff to be long enough in order for me to wear it. Why? I don't wear dresses, I wear pants and I don't like a pants that is too loose because I'm not my 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 bottom half, my leg area is not tall. I've got a longer upper body than a leg area. Where but anyway, so if I wear pants that's baggy, I'm going to look even shorter and bigger and I don't I just don't feel comfortable in doing that. So I rather want my tops to be a bit longer that you can't really see where my waist area is. Even though I've got the hourglass figure with that. Um, so too much detail, too much sharing. I want to watch this out. Okay, so the yarn that I'm using is I want to call it Aldred, but he said it's like Albert, Aldred, Aldred, yarns, and this is the um, corporate cat, and it's blue, sorry, I had, I opened up this one, that's why it's no longer neat, and it's got browns in it, a little bit of craze, and this is the Superwash DK, uh, it's 185 meters per 100 grams. It is affordable, but no, but check your pattern to make sure that you buy enough, <laughs> which I probably didn't do. Um, this is my first, um, my first garment that I use knitting from a pattern with a double knit. Now you will tell me now you're lying because what you've got on. So the one that I've got on, I only did this in the pattern. The balance of the garment I did from my mind, from memory. You know how Michelle works, hey? <laughs> so let me put that back. So this is my renonculus. I do it with um, a make-along or a knit-along with um, Mariette de Boerfro and Leone from Independent Crafts. I can't remember, she changed a uh, podcast name now recently and I, I just can't remember that. But I'll link it below um, and I think it's just lovely. I can't show you. I think the colors does show nicely even though it's stripy it's it's not, it's not one line one line it's like yeah i wish to have it finished for the 10th for the sit and knit in public 
I think because it's going to be openish, it's not going to be too hot, and I won't wear a um, a long sleeve underneath it like I'm doing today, um, so that I can move around and not get all flushed up. So I'm looking very forward to this to finish. Yeah, I know you're asking me, but what about the color work one that you're doing? I'm not saying anything about the color work. So I'm doing, a, we are, I'm hosting a color work cow. It's, the hashtag is hey color work. Hey, happy ever yarn. Hey, uh, color work. Um, on Instagram, I do have lovely prizes for it. So, not not to have it, Minzy from not to have it, gifted me um, a voucher um, that you can go and choose in an online shop, whatever you want. Um, it's it's wow! It's really like thank you so much for this. I really appreciate that, um, and I'm sure the winner will be grateful for that. Mm. Yeah, so so let me make up my mind about the pattern that I'm doing because I think I'm going to change it again. There's something about that, either the combination of the yarn that I'm using or the pattern. I don't want to say it's the pattern. I think it's the combination of the the color work, the color that I'm using with my my color work, um, with the main color, the the charcoal uh, black color that it's not doing it for me and so I do like halfway and then just I lose interest and it's not because of the stranded work because I do do that and I, I don't have a problem in, in doing stranded color work um, yeah so let me finish this one the, the renunculus and then I'll take up my color work again so if you want to join the color work gallery you're more than welcome to it's running till the end of October the prices will be drawn in the first week in November and um, yeah okay so I think that's my story in Afrikaans we would have said flat flat mysterious eight <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to try and translate it. Um, whistle, whistle. That's the end of my story. <laughs> Doesn't sound the same though. And um, I want to wish you uh, well for the week ahead. Please stay a little bit longer to watch the little video at the end. And let me know whether you like that. Whether I can do more of those or mustn't worry about that. Um, And what else is there? Nothing that I can think of right now. Maybe next time I'll talk more. So the next one is the first weekend. I'll do some planning for June. And I'll let you know what my plans are for June. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with this hair. Do I need to cut it all off? Do I need to grow in my fridge again like it used to be? Anyway, it's because it's in my eyes, and I think that's what causing the redness. But I've got sinus as well. You can hear me; I'm blocked up. Anyway, so have a lovely week. Um, enjoy your knitting. Spend some time with the loved ones, and and the animals. Be kind. See you again soon, I hope. Bye.